everybody, Lisa here with another Vera Bradley bag of the day. Today is actually National Handbag Day. Happy National Handbag Day, everybody! <laughs> um, and so because of that, I thought it would be fun to use a real handbag as the bag of the day and talk about that. And so I thought I would show this uh, 100 handbag in Foxwood, which was my last, uh, my, my most recent uh, 100 purchase and will probably be my last one because it seems like they have retired the style. I mean, unless they're revamping it, um, which would be nice. Um, it, it, it seems to have gone away, which is a shame because I think, you know, it does sort of speak to the history of the um, brand and it is a real handbag, girly girl kind of handbag. But you know, can be used as a shoulder bag or a crossbody as well, so it's it's versatile. I was not expecting to get the 100 in Foxwood because, as everybody knows, I'm obsessed with the critters, and <laughs> I had seen this in a, a number of stores, and I would always look at it for foxes and, and whatnot, and I uh, could never find foxes on it, and I just sort of threw up my hands and said, oh, forget it. I mean, the, the odds of getting foxes on this thing are just so slim, it's not worth it. I'm not going to keep looking at it. Um, but when Foxwood went on sale, I uh, saw this in, in a store I had been in before and had been looking at the 100 before and had not seen any foxes. So clearly they, you know, it was in the back or they had gotten more stock in or something. And there were foxes. And so I was so overjoyed. Let's see. Well, this is technically the front. No foxes except upside down on the handle there, which I didn't notice until after I had the bag home, so that was kind of a nice surprise. Um, there is one on the back there in a really good spot, and I tend to not really pay attention to front or back on this, especially because it has a double zipper pull, uh, so which is very handy. Love that feature in any bag, because it gives you some flexibility with where you want to open the bag and how how you want to work the zipper and, and so that can be handy. And then there is the fox up top. So when I saw that there and it was on sale in the store, I mean I hadn't been, you know, ever planning to get this bag and I just thought, oh well, hard to leave it behind. That is the only, those are the only critters on here. I didn't get any chipmunks or any rabbits. I do really love the rabbit in this powder and so it's a little bit of a bummer but I am not going to argue with the foxes. Even this end is nice with that flower there. What I do really like about the pattern placement on this bag also is that I, with the exception of this, which is sort of blocked by the strap, uh, you know, covered by the strap a little bit, I've managed to avoid the really big flowers everywhere, and, and, and that's what I prefer. So, um, this is a real handbag. I do like to carry it from the handles or slip it up through on my arm, but I also like to use it as a shoulder um, bag. I don't like to use it as crossbody because I like it to have its shape like this, very boxy and be filled out. And I think that a, ba a crossbody bag that sticks out from your body like that looks ridiculous. Looks like a camera bag, at a, but at a weird spot on your body. I don't like a crossbody bag with a lot of structure. You doing pumpkin? God forbid you should stay on the blanket, right? God forbid. Hi. Hi, girly girl. Okay. So, um, so I I, I do like to use it as a shoulder bag, and this is the cross by removable crossbody strap that you can use as a shoulder strap as well. And at this length, the shortest length. I do have, I have measured this in numerous videos. I don't have my tape measure. I'll try to put some links to my other 100 videos, but I may even have a playlist for 100s. I'm not sure. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi, girly girl. How you doing? Um, I do feel like this, this strap drop, even at its shortest, is a little long for me. Um, yeah. You know, it's up there. It's good. It's uh, it's passable. I, I, I will accept this strap drop, but I, I do like it even a little bit up more. Um, and so, 
I was very pleased. Hi. Uh, when I realized, because I had been doing this with the Carson, my Carson shoulder bags, where I didn't like, I was having trouble with the strap drop. Um, and so I've been taking off the Carson Hobo strap and using it on other bags as an alternate strap. And it's been working out really well. And so I realized I could do that with this. And I was so ecstatic when I realized that. Um, I'm just going to take off this shoulder strap. I usually stick this in the bag, whatever bag I take it off of, just so I always have it with me when I'm using the bag in case I want to switch it up for whatever reason, like in an emergency if I needed to carry something crossbody or something. So it's a bit shorter, this strap. And this is a black microfiber um, Carson Hobo strap that I got off of my uh, mosaic uh, Carson Hobo. So this I really like. I know it looks a little like it's up. Uh, very square up there. I have this stuffed right now, which I was going to talk about because people always ask me about shaping this bag, so that, that's why it looks like this. It wouldn't look quite so rigid uh, up here once I have my stuff in it, which I will put. I will put my stuff in there. But I really do like that option of getting a, a strap drop super short um, that, that I do like. So people do ask me uh, how do I get my 100s to keep their shape well? Um, and, and it's a process. <laughs> it, it can be tedious because people know, it, it, you know, they have to ship these flat and so, and they have some stiffener in there, which I'm guessing is some kind of soft plastic. And um, so the bag really wants to go into that folded origami kind of flattened shape. Um, it's frustrating. And so, um, short of washing it, I mean, I think you, I could, I, you could wash this. I would wash this if I needed to, but I haven't wanted to do that unless I needed to. Um, so what I do is I stuff it with stuff, and then sometimes I'll keep it in the bathroom with me when I'm showering, so it gets kind of exposed to some hot, moistness, you know, some dampness, and then let it dry that way with with the stuffing. Uh, some, you know, you could probably spritz it with water uh, once you got it into the shape you wanted. But anyway, I basically what I'm doing is just storing it, occasionally putting it in the shower with me, but mostly just storing it stuff with stuff. I mean, even once it has its good shape, sometimes I will, I'll still keep them stuffed with stuff so that they maintain their shape. And then when I want to use them, I pull out the stuff. So there's some dish towels in here that I, I don't use that much. And... A sweatshirt I don't use that much, and another sweatshirt I don't use that much. Um, and so the bags really keep their shape. Sometimes I use socks, and I really make an effort to force the the stuffing into the co corners of the bag to really force the sides of the bag to train out flat, train themselves to be flat, rather than wanting to, you know, compress and jet out like they do when you first buy the bag. Same thing with the bottom, which wants to crease, it comes folded up down the center, and I don't know if you can still see it, you can maybe, you probably won't be able to see it, but there's still sort of a remnant there, you can see that dip of it wanting to sort of fold there. So that's why I feel like it's a good idea to keep it stuffed with stuff. I have a few of them stuffed with like other wallets and other Vera that I don't use, and that's helping it keep its shape. But initially, I do keep it stuffed with, you know, towels or, you know, other fabric, you know, that I can really force it out with. And I'm always careful when I put the stuffing in there because I don't want to tax the ends of the zippers and have any tears there. Um, so I'm careful stuffing stuff in but I do stuff it real tight and it really works for me and then also when I load the bag up um, I pay attention to how I'm throwing stuff in there and that can help the bag keep its shape too so that when I pick it up by the handles you know it doesn't start to go like to squeeze in on itself too much uh, because there's stuff in there keeping it wider so I can put some stuff in there and see how it goes, see how it 
if I <laughs> see if what I'm saying is true. Uh, so I'll put a, a you know a turn lock. You know, normally it's a smaller bag. I might you know I might be tempted to switch into a smaller wallet, but I'm not going to do that because um, this is a nice large size and it's gonna, helps. It's going to help keep shape. Same thing with my mask pouch. It's nice and big. That's going to help. So right now I'm just stacking everything sort of upright, but I have sometimes put things in like this flat and so that, that the width of them helps keep the width of the bag. I've done that with my iPad mini, um, which I do have here. I haven't been able to, I couldn't lie my full-size iPad this way. It would have to sort of be on a diagonal. I'm going to put my mini in there. I have my charger cord pouch, which is a light, not medium cosmetic. People see my videos. This is all my standard stuff. GPS pouch. Now, normally with a smaller bag, I might ch I might change to a smaller one of these, but for the for the video, I'll just keep it in there. And so everything is sort of stacking, stacking in there. And I'm gonna stick my oh, let's see my phone. That's important. I I wouldn't go anywhere without my phone. I'm going to stick it in the Carson cell phone crossbody for protection. There are, there is, in, in the inside here, there is one zipper pocket. And on the other wall of the bag, there are two slip pockets that are kind of small. I couldn't fit this in one of those slip pockets. I think my phone might fit in there naked. <laughs> Let's see. It's tight. It does fit in, but it's tight. It's, it's super tight. So I probably wouldn't force it. And this is an I, uh, iPhone 11. So I'm just going to put this in a Carson cell phone crossbody in there. Uh, see now leaving it, leaving it upright does kind of help, right? It would help keep the bag, give the bag some resistance when it wants to collapse in on itself. Um, I don't know if I need to do that because it's getting kind of stuffed already. So I don't know that I need that extra help. I'm not sure if my hand sanitizer bottle will fit in here. It might stick out a little bit, which is okay. Yeah, it will stick out a little bit. But I have at times carried it like that, sticking out. Because, I mean, I'm not worried about aesthetics here. I'm worried about safety. That's the most important thing. And I do want my hand sanitizer with me. So I got a lot in here now. Um, I even have more stuff I could cram in here to give it shape, like a mini notebook, and this really will. This is hard, you know. This won't bend. But I don't think I need it. But, th but that's something else that would help to keep it shape. So basically, I mean, the most important things are the phone and the wallet and the hand sanitizer and the a mask. And so I have all that in there. All just sort of stacked up on itself, so it's easy access. See, so yeah, see if I'm, I'm see if I can get it open real good so people can see. Fold the top back a little bit. Yeah. Um, this bag is nice too because it's got these two sort of hidden zipper pockets up top on each side. You know. And that that's kind of nice. You know, nice to slip things in there. You could put a put your slip your phone in there. I like that. I would probably stick grocery lists in there. Or tissues, maybe. So there it is. Still holding its shape well. Even a little too much, maybe, because when I put it... Oh, no, it's going to crunch a little bit. It will crunch a little bit. So I'm going to put the... Um, that went to my shoulder strap. Oh, I don't know why I took that off. Um, so I'm going to put it on again with the shortest shoulder strap just to see how it looks. It's been a while since I've done this so um, it does probably require a little bit of adjusting you know, as to how fat the bag looks. So I feel like it's you know it's it's not as it still looks very square this way but I like that. I like that up here. I don't like it down here that way sticking out because then when I walk 
it bounce. It feel I feel like it's bouncing around off of me, and I don't like that. Not it's not conforming to my body, molding to my body the way a softer cross body would. So that's that's my, one of my objections with that. Um, but I don't mind it boxy up top, and I like that my shoulder, my arm sort of, you know, can help secure it. So I was really pleased when I realized I could do this, and I got I had one in black which is what, what I needed for this because the background is black. And I couldn't find any other straps that would coordinate, you know, pick up one of the other colors in the pattern, so I needed to go with black. So I'm just going to put the other um, strap back on. Uh, oops. <laughs> I'm just going to put the other shoulder strap back on just to see the difference, compare the difference. I could put it on crossbody, too. But, um, I, like, I people have... Uh, so uh, people have asked me about the shape, and I do find that packing it, paying attention to how you're packing it up can really help if you're not going to be storing it stuffed. Like, people don't always have space to do that. They need to store it flat. Um, and so, you know, it won't keep its shape as well, you know, just alone. And so you need to pay attention to how you're packing it up. If you pay attention to how you're packing it up, that can help. I'm just so pleased with this bag. Pleased to find, where's my, oh, that's the front. <laughs> Let me get the fox out. There's my fox. There's my fox. So it's not bad even at this shoulder length, you know. And let's see. I do like this buckle on the adjustable strap. I like it better than the buckle on the um, factory, the buckle that they, the crossbody adjustable buckle that they use on factory bags, factory outlet bags. It's a little sharper, has sharper edges, and I, I'm not crazy about that. At least it, it did the last time I looked at a crossbody bag, they had to make change to it. So I like a crossbody bag to hang a little low. That's just, that, see that to me, that just is weird. You can really see this back strap stretching out. That doesn't look good to me. Um, but, it, you know, in a pinch, if it, I needed to be hands-free, I could do it. I guess if you have it in the front more. The strap, this strap doesn't look as awkward. So, here it is, crossbody. Really, just so I was so so excited to find the foxes on this because I, I really thought, think it it was a challenge. The odds are very slim, and and so uh, very pleased with that. I do carry it this way. You know, have to really get far away from my camera <laughs> to be in this shot. And, you know, slip it that way. And that's a real handbaggy thing to do, right? To do that. That's very girly. But it's National Handbag Day, so. <laughs> so we're really going to be girls today. Anyway, that was that. Not too long today for National Handbag Day with uh, 100 handbag and foxwood, which unfortunately they don't seem to be making anymore. Uh, very sad to see that go. It would be nice if it came back in some way. Um, and I do prefer this to the original style, which had the longer handles. That These these handles were actually the shoulder straps. I didn't like that. That was an awkward look for me. The proportions there was odd, were odd. It seemed odd to have this small kind of duffel-like bag with these super long extended shoulder straps. So I've never, never gone in for it. I haven't bothered getting any vintage 100s. This is the only 100 I really like. This reminds me of the Speedy, the Louis Vuitton Speedy bag, um, you know, which I could never afford. <laughs> that's my, that's my when I win the lottery bag. I'm gonna get my my Louis Vuitton little Speedy, and I'm gonna get my Mercedes Benz G wagon G500. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get myself all kitted out and my uh, my four door Wrangler. 
<laughs> that's a dream. Anyway, thanks. I digress. That's for my that's for my other uh, YouTube channel that I'm gonna hopefully start soon, where I can just talk about anything. I can talk about cars there until my heart's content. Um, <laughs> here we talk about bags. Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully see you next time on Vera Bradley Bag of the Day.